This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and so if you want to indirectly support the channel while also buying or selling cards for your own matches, your own tournaments, your own duels, your own purposes, your own needs, then definitely check out their site and see what they have to offer you. I'm a big fan of how they do business, and their pricing and shipping from what I've seen and experienced thus far are both top notch. So definitely check out their site, which is linked in the description, and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro dual video and this time I'm going to be playing with uh, with an oldie but goodie, a deck that I very much enjoy. I'm kind of upset that I won Rock, Paper, Scissors here because I am going to be blinding second to at least see if this works as well as I'm hoping it does. I've done a few test games with this deck in its, uh, in its current form and the results were kind of promising. I'm going second, I opened Max C, amazing, but as you can see, I'm playing with Necros cards. This is a Necros deck that I'm trying out. It's got Kaijus in it to help going with second, you know, with the going second nonsense uh, and all that. Uh, but the new card, uh, Ariel, um, the whatever th of Necros, it's what, Priestess or something like that? I don't even know. Um, its effect is kind of decent. It is an additional searcher, which is something that's actually pretty important. Uh, but there's only one copy of it in the deck. There's definitely a lot of, like, reasons why that card's not really that good. But it is supported well by the fact that the deck can you just you can play tons of things that are the oddball levels that have been problems in the past, which things like Shrit changed and allowed you to be able to work with. Um, mainly, like this build has like three Exa in it and two Cataster because Cataster allowing you to bypass your normal summon is you know a key thing there that allows you to just go from there. So he is using Glass Bell to search. So he's playing something with Wind Witches in it. Uh, which is fine. I'm completely okay with this. I'm going to basically be trying to shove this entire like hand down his throat next turn. If I draw a Sinju or a Manju next turn, then I have an amazing amount of play string capability uh, that I can go with here. But unless my the only thing that I'm really afraid of is him flipping something like Dimensional Barrier. And if he flips D Barrier, I'm going to absolutely like shit a brick. Um, well, let's interrupt a Kaiju Slumber, which I'm probably going to go ahead and activate because it can clear the board. He's playing Wind Witches, so I know that he's going to be able to put an indestructible Crystal Wing out there. So if I activate this and go ahead and put it in Grave, then that'll give me a good amount of, um, of stuff to work with. Because he can't safely make Crystal Wing, especially with the fact that I'll have Max C to answer the Ice Bell. So that'd be a good thing to uh, have there. Now, I wonder why that lag happened. Uh, please don't tell me that the U.S. servers are uh, are shitting themselves yet again. That would be terrible. Uh, I've I've already told no effect to activate. There we go. Uh, special summon to your side of the field. Yes, yes. I'm gonna special summon this one to my side of the field, and then I'm gonna special summon the Gamma Seal to my opponent's side of the field, and then I will kill it. Uh, and then that will be that. Now I've got access into Kaleidoscope and. Um, what I could get here is I could go ahead, hmm, I'm thinking here. I could go Brio, I can go Brio for Unicor, uh, Clausulus for Kaleidoscope, uh, and then I'd be able to drop Trish and Unicor, and that would be pretty good, uh, straight out. It would be very bad for me resource-wise, but I've got the Max C to kind of follow up on that. Uh, we'll see what happens. We will see. I'll have the Valkyrus backing myself up, but that doesn't really do much against a Crystal Wing. Um, so that's kind of not something I need to, uh, like, be focusing on. Or I could go ahead and get Exa, and I could just do that. Ah! I'm, I've got a weird hand in terms of how this is structured. I could go Kaleidoscope, and I could do that. Or I could get Exa here, um, and I could summon the, uh, the Valkyrus and search Cataster. Uh, and then that would be that. There's, there's always a lot of things to consider, but this hand is odd. I'll definitely give it that. Uh, but so yeah, we'll just go for the unicorn. The Cataster plays are really cool with this deck though because there are so many of the little small ones, uh, the little small Necros dudes, the non-rituals. Uh, there's like four of the level fours. There's a Dance Princess, there is a Ariel, there is a... there's two Great Sorcerers. So with all of those things combined, with all those factors, you have a, a good amount of uh, things that you can do because of the fact that you can uh, use like Manju Sinju to search Cataster and then bring back one of those level 4s and just make free easy rank 4s. So that's that's a pretty easy thing to deal with. Uh, but So I'm going to get the Trishula here. I'll be able to Trishula his stuff. Um, I, I'm afraid of back row. <laughs> I'm very afraid of back row. 
and things of that like, I'm going to end up uh, banishing the the Brio and the Clausalis to summon this Trishula. I'm going to use Trishula's effect because he's put this, you know, this glass bells in the graveyard now because of my Kaiju Slumber, so there's that that I can work with. This deck seems a lot more all or nothing than it used to be, and that is a big problem that it has, and it's a big problem I have with it. Uh, things like implementing Brilliant Fusion into the list might actually fix that to a degree, or maybe putting a trap lineup in it and making the deck more going first focus. Like maybe a play set of strikes and warnings with like the hand traps so that you can draw into these sorts of things. But so I'm going to use Trishula to banish one of these back rows because I'm not in the mood to run into something like a Storming Mirror Force. Um, if I banish the Kaiju, then this is like game, but. I don't want to take the risk of this being something that I want to, you know, not have to deal with. So we're gonna we're gonna do that. But what was that? And what did I hit out of his hand? I hit a ghost ogre out of his hand, and that was a set dark hole. Shit. So if this is something real, we're gonna have a problem. Uh, but I'm gonna attack with this kaiju over my kaiju. I've got the max C to answer the ice bell, which is very good for me actually, because with max C on ice bell, I draw two cards. Just another reason why ice bell is like a really shitty card is that. If you summon from deck with the Ice Bell, your opponent gets a second draw. <laughs> like, there's so many things about Ice Bell that I hate. I could make an entire video around why I dislike Wind Witch Ice Bell, and I think it is a horrible card in terms of how it was designed. They were way too restrictive with the card. Uh, but so my opponent still has life, my opponent is still able to play. I do have Necro's cards engraved that I can banish for my Valkyrus. I've got Kaiju Slumber next turn, which I can banish to add a Kaiju to hand to put over whatever threat that he makes. Preferably a threat that he's going to be making with this Ice Bell. I told him to play something meta. Um, oh, he opened Dark Hole and Raigeki. <laughs> well then. Okay, well he's Raigekiing my entire field. Um, and now I'm just going to maxi you. It's it's simple, right? Uh, but now next turn I'll be able to do some stuff. Because I'll be able to banish the Unicorn. Uh, and banish a, a Ritual Spell to recur there. So I've at least got one Ritual Spell next turn that I have access to. Uh, I've got a few different things that I can work with, but, uh, so he is gonna go for it. See, I draw two cards. That's, that's amazing. Exa and Sinju, fantastic. Um, like, that's actually just great, uh, because I'm gonna be able to use Sinju to search for, like, Clausalus and discard it for a spell then, and then that'll allow me to summon the Valkyrus, which will get Cataster if I use the Exa, which then brings the Exa back. So this, this deck is very good at, like, focus firing damage down. Uh, that's very some that's something that's very very key that it does, but so I feel like he's playing like Wind Witch Invoked and just bricked or something like that, because I told him to play uh, as meta of a deck as possible um, from what he has access to, because I wanted to test this against something more meta oriented. Now whether or not it's Rogue meta or whether it's meta is uh, well Rogue meta is kind of kind of outside of the the scope, but I mean like Wind Witch Invoked is like Rogue but people can consider it meta. It's it's a weird sort of situation here, but I'm going to be guaranteed if he goes into something like the Crystal Wing, which he definitely should not do, by the way, if he respects the fact that there is a Kaiju Slumber in my graveyard, he should not go into the Crystal Wing. <laughs> this is definitely something he shouldn't be doing if he decides to do that uh, playline, but he might not have any other choice, but I am guaranteed getting two more draws if he does go into Crystal Wing. So this Max C is going to be drawing five cards off that one Ice Bell. Who, baby. Like, best card, great card. What an amazing card design. And he can't do anything else from his extra deck for the rest of this turn. Except summon wind monsters. Like, that's that's the biggest kick in the ass. Is that you just can't do anything else. Uh, that's what I hate the most about that card. Uh, but so, he has summoned this. Did it freeze? Okay, there we go. Preparation of rights. Holy shit. Okay, well then that gets to add the Clausalus or the Cataster, uh, but the Exo is going to add Cataster, so the prep is probably going to add, um, well, my Unicorn is in Grave, so what I need, honestly, the best thing that I could draw between this next draw, uh, if he summons a level 8, uh, and the draw for turn, right, the best thing I could get out of it is, is he going to the Crystal Wing? Yeah, this is just not correct. Um... This is just incorrect to be doing here because I've got a Kaiju Slumber Engrave. Uh, and you should be respecting that. But if your deck can't do anything else at this point, then I don't blame you. I'm not going to waste this Valkyrus because he just gets to negate it and then gain its attack value. Which, um, 
Uh, that would put it pretty damn high. Uh, that would put it at a 5,900 body. He has no more back row to follow up either. Shit, man. Sometimes that just is the way that things go. Uh, but so, I can tribute the Exa, search Cataster. Uh, Cataster can't bring back anything in my graveyard because I don't have any access into the smaller Necros dudes. Uh, I can use Prep here for Clausalus and get back a mirror so I don't have to worry about banishing anything. So that's fine. I probably should up the number of Colossaluses in my deck, but I've got a lot of these uh, ritual spells in my deck anyway. Um, in terms of, like, I'm playing three Kaleidoscope, three Mirror, because, like, those are the most important ones. You you need to be playing these cards. Uh, so I can get back... I can Normal Summon this, Search. I can Summon Valkyrus. I can get my Kaiju first, so that I can just do it over this and not have to worry about his um, Crystal Wing negating my things. The last Kaiju in my deck, the Cumongous. The Sticky Icky! And so we'll just give him this. A nice gift for you. You let me draw five off Max C, so I'll give you a present too. It's very it's very simple. Uh, but So I'll use this Clausalus here to search for Cycle. Uh, because my Brio is banished. That's kind of irritating. I did, I did say that I was going to be running through a lot of resources very quickly. But I'm kind of upset that I went through as many as I did. Uh, just saying. But what I can do is I can use this cycle if I draw into something that I rotate out with this. So yeah, okay, uh, this is this is perfectly fine. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll activate this first, and I'm going to banish the Colossalus Engrave and use the Exa from hand because that's an, one of those odd levels that you want to hit. And the Exa will search Catastor, so that thins my deck by a card, right? Uh, the Manju can search something uh, in the form of like another Valkyrus or whatever. Not too worried about that. But, what I do have access into doing is that I can rotate the, the uh, Sinju and the Ghost Ash out of my hand to try and draw cards, because I don't necessarily need them, and I'm going to be making something like Emerald. So, okay, I've drawn these cards. Fantastic. Amazing. And I've got Cycle, which I can use on the Aerial, uh, which will let me do that. Or I could use Cycle on... Well, I could do Cycle on that, and that would add the uh, Dance Princess to hand. And then I can normal summon my Manju, I can normal summon my Cataster, and then that would be pretty damn good. And I can uh, I don't need to use the uh, Great Sorcerer because I'll be able to just Manju search another Valkyrus. So yeah, we'll just go with that. Um, so we'll do this. I can actually summon Trishula again. Uh, funnily enough, is that something I don't? Is that something I want to do? No, no, it's not. But we'll uh, we'll ditch this, and that will get me to that will get me the search for the Dance Princess. Because I've already got Great Sorcerer. So it does it does work some business uh, very, very effectively. And so, yeah, we'll get this. I've got the Exo Engrave, which I can use with Mirror next turn. There's Well, if there is a next turn, which there probably will not be because I can attack over these. And then that's just game. Uh, so there's that that is capable of being done. The Exo can just extend my damage reach, so we're not too worried about that. We'll just add another Valkyrus because the Mirrors can recur for themselves. Uh, so there is all that. So he opened very poorly if he's just opening board wipes and shit. Like, that's that's a bit unfortunate, but hey, man. <laughs> that's the way that shit works sometimes. I can make Emerald shuffle my stuff back, uh, but there's really no point in that. I actually... I'm actually a dumbass. I should have used Cataster first to bring back my Aerial, made a rank 4 with U with Unicorn and Aerial, uh, Digusto Emerald the Unicorn back into my deck, drawn a card, Summoned the Manju, searched Unicorn, and then dropped it with Kaleidoscope, and then searched Valkyrus. It's been a minute since I've played this deck. So, oops! It's been a little while, but it definitely does feel good to be playing this deck again when you actually get to play it. But like I said, a few times by now, it's a very much all-or-nothing sort of deal. You very, very infrequently get access into play lines where you have tons of capability of just recycling your resource pool. But there is three Digesto Emeralds in this extra deck because, like I said, the Cataster stuff works that way. Manju and Sinju with Cataster is one card rank fours. Every single time and every single game that you have the level four, like non ritual Necros monsters in your graveyard, every single time those cards are there, they are a fantastic, fan fantastic way for you to just make free rank fours whether it's a diamond dire whether it's tornado dragon whether it's castell whether it's dweller whether it's emeralds all of those different options are available and they're all fantastic um, and that's why the exa like catastrophe thing is really important for this list and really important for this deck 
um, if you're trying to play it in the format. And the Kaiju Engine just makes it very easy for you to go second. And there are the Ghost Ashes as well, the Ash Blossoms. So the Ash Blossoms and the Maxi are in here. You actually probably would be behooved and be like benefited uh, by increasing the Hand Trap lineup uh, a little bit just so it's more safe going second either that or the option is to like increase the deck size a little bit and try to go first with it like including like actual traps like playing the maxi and the three ash blossoms but then also playing like triple strike and warning and then like you go first and you like stick like valkyrus unicor on the field because unicor by itself is kind of a floodgate as well against a lot of decks in the meta and then backing that up with like traps and like drawing cards could be a good option as well there's a lot of different things you can do with this deck. This deck is still very like versatile in how you can structure play lines, but it is a bit more all or nothing because of the fact that Shrit isn't here and Brio and Unicor are at one. If Brio and Unicor were just at higher numbers, like if both of them were at like two, I could see this deck doing a little bit more than it currently is doing. Because I mean, Shrit being gone is a huge problem, but it's compounded by the fact that Brio and Unicor are both at one, and those are the best cards that you're trying to get access to every game, and it makes your searching really stressed, and that's kind of that niche thing that Ariel, um, like, fulfills, that niche role, where, like, you contribute it and search for your Exa or your or Great Sorcerer or your Dance Princess. It, like, lightens a little bit of the load once you get access into it, so, I mean, like, it's not the greatest card by any stretch of the imagination. Its level modulation is kind of alright, but at the same time, it's not really something that I would play, like, three of, but... Things like Exa definitely fulfill like a 3 of because you need a level 5 to try and summon Valkyrus. Uh, it's very important. But anyway, this is all just like a theory owed deck list. This is all just something I put together when I had some spare time because I was like, you know what I fucking miss? I fucking miss blue cards. That's what I miss doing, summoning blue cards. I, I want it to be 2015 again. It's been a while. But anyway... As always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below and all that sort of nonsense. Links are in the description of my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to support the channel directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. It shows support for something you really like. Also, it helps me have some future projects come into fruition a bit sooner because they'll have a bit better financial backing, essentially. As well as, if you want to play me for videos or if you just want to chat with me on a 24-7 basis whenever I have access to my phone or a computer and I'm not totally busy, one of the reward tiers gets you access into my private Discord server where me and a bunch of other people, including Dance King, just populate on a daily basis and talk about just random shit whether it be Yu-Gi-Oh or not so if you're interested in any of those things then definitely check out the patreon link in the description but other than that as I've already said thanks for watching guys let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below like this video if you liked the content that I've been producing le like recently and want to see more of it if you're new here consider subscribing to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh content and I'd love to welcome you into this community this little dysfunctional family based around my channel with me at the helm even though I'm kind of a dumbass I don't think that I should be taken seriously at all but apparently there are people that think I should all that sort of stuff but if you're new here and liked what you saw then definitely consider subscribing and I'd love to have you on board but other than that as I've already said, thanks for watching, thanks for your time as usual guys, and take care. I'll see you in the next video.